Good morning and welcome into another episode of Inside 300 presented by InsideTheMagic.com. I'm your host, Brian. Now, before we get to our biggest stories, let's talk some giveaways because in a few moments, we're going to announce which one of you won the Dooney and Burke Haunted Mansion bag. And we have some other great news. If you didn't win, you have another opportunity to win a really cool prize. We've teamed up with Thomas Kincaid Studios to celebrate the release of Cruella starring Emma Stone. Check this out. It is a 12 by 18 framed canvas that retails for over $800. The title of the piece is On The Run. So for you to be in the running, head to InsideMagic.com and click the giveaway tab. All right, that's all the time we have for this intro. It's time to start the clock, so without further delay, let's launch this episode of Inside 300. What could be better than combining two of the greatest destinations on the planet, Walt Disney World and Las Vegas? How about finding an abandoned monorail that used to run above both places? When Walt Disney World opened 12 years following the debut of the Disneyland monorail, guests boarded the Mach 4 models as they majestically pulled through the contemporary resort at a blazing speed of 5 miles per hour. Throughout the years, each of the systems, both Disney World and Disneyland, have upgraded their fleet of trains to keep up with the technology of today. Unless you're counting the last 30 years of the same trains being used in Orlando, but what do you do with the old ones? Well, in the case of a pair of Mach 4 models that ran in Orlando beginning in the mid-80s, you sell them to Vegas. Hey, could be worse. You have to go back to 1995 when Sin City built their first piece of what is now the Las Vegas monorail system. Then known as the MGM Grand Valley's monorail, the system operated more like a shuttle and only featured two stations. The trains themselves were purchased from the House of Mouse for a cool $3.5 million. Specifically, Vegas drafted monorail Coral, and Monorail Lime from Disney's Rotation, both of which were newer versions of the Mach 4s. Now obviously, they were painted over to match the new theming, but the Bally's version looked nearly identical to its Disney World roots. On June 13, 1995, the Monorails made their debut with the help of Wizard of Oz characters. At the time, MGM had a theme park in its backyard, MGM Grand Adventures Park. So the featured characters is no surprise. The beautifully redecorated Disney trains ran until 2002 when the system expanded and a new fleet replaced them. Fast forward 19 years later and here's what we got. Photos from at Theme Park Shark on Twitter, which is a great account and definitely worth a follow, showcase part of the Bally's theme trains sitting in the desert. So uh, let's start the bidding at 10 bucks. What do you say? The team at Theme Park Shark even got a shot of the manufacturer's plate which showcases the refurbishment time of 94.95. Here's hoping the trains stay in relatively good condition. Universal Orlando is increasing the base pay for their team members to $15 an hour, effective June 27th. It's a nice little $2 increase from the previous minimum at the resort and nearly double of the state's minimum wage of $8.65. It is worth noting that this will match Disney World's offer to their unionized cast, which will kick in in October. We've all dealt with our fair share of scalpers when going to different sporting events or concerts. You know, folks outside stadiums reselling tickets to sold-out events at higher rates. So I guess we shouldn't be surprised then when Gideon's Bakehouse had to make an announcement on Facebook telling people to stop reselling their cookies. Gideon swept Disney Springs by storm at the end of last year with their now famous baked goods. The company took to social media to warn potential buyers to avoid I guess we could call them cookie scalpers. When talking about the resellers, the company said, some of the scalpers are less than honest with both you and me. Please avoid these services. A massive thank you to everyone who has our back and alerts me about these posts. The company pointed out that they do not offer shipping because they are a legit local bakery, making everything from scratch. And the national demand would simply crush them. It's a good problem to have. Believe it or not, Gideon's has a virtual queue now, just like Rise of the Resistance and the soon-to-be-open Spider-Man ride over in California Adventure. At times, guests can wait up to eight hours for some cookies. Marvel, and more specifically Oscar Isaac, have confirmed the actor's involvement as Moon Knight in a secret that hadn't been very well kept since 2020. The character's comic debut dates back to the mid-70s, and Marvel executive producer Kevin Feige described the lead character like this been a while since we've had an action hero who jumps out of buildings and gets into fights. Hmm. Moon Knight's origin and detailed history can be found by visiting 
marvel.com. The show is scheduled for a 2022 release as another episodic MCU adventure only available on Disney+. Plus. In our second episode, we announced the Dooney and Burke Haunted Mansion Bag Giveaway. The item was no longer being sold on Shop Disney at the time, and you had over a week to enter the sweepstakes over on InsideTheMagic.com. Well, the time is now. I'm excited to declare that we do indeed have a winner. So, drumroll please. Congratulations goes out to Henderson, Nevada, and Jennifer Montez. Hey, shout out the Henderson Silver Knights. The Dooney and Burke Haunted Mansion bag is headed your way. Way. Congrats, you're officially a happy haunt. Thanks for tuning in and be on the lookout for an email from our team with instructions on how to receive your gift. And that's going to do it for another episode of Inside 300. Remember that Cruella is out now in theaters and available on Disney+. Plus. To celebrate, you can win the Thomas Kincaid Studios On The Run limited edition art piece. This 12 by 18 frame canvas retails for over $800.00. And you can earn extra entries by doing things like resharing the sweepstakes or even resharing this episode of Inside 300. Remember, it only takes about five minutes to tune into episodes we air every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday morning at 8 a.m. Eastern, 7 o'clock Central. I'm Brian. I'll see you next week. And uh, congrats, Jen. <laughs>